Today, July 17th, 2018, marks the one year anniversary of me releasing videos regularly on YouTube. Now, this uh, started off after I released this uh, video about upgrading RAM the hard way on July 17th, 2017. And I was inspired to try making YouTube videos um, from Jiraga1 after I made a video for him, for his channel, about installing Windows NT server um, to run a Doom server on. And uh, from there, it, it just kind of kept going. I didn't really know what uh, I was going to end up doing with making videos, but, you know, it seemed like fun. I This is all stuff that I like to do anyway, so I figured I might as well make videos about it while I'm doing it. So today I want to take a look back at some of the videos I made over the last year. I want to take a look at the top five videos that got the most views. And I want to take a look at five videos that, if you haven't been watching my channel for a while, you may want to go back and check out. So we're going to start off with the Xserve storage video. Now I always find it very surprising that this video is fairly popular. I just, it, I don't think that it's a terrific video, so I assume people are just curious about Xserves. So, the whole point of me making this video was supposed to be about finding alternatives to these really hard-to-find Apple Drive modules for the Xserve, which is just one of the many reasons that the Xserve is terrible and it's not a big deal that Apple stopped making servers. But these are not the easiest things to get, and when I was doing this video, I only had one. So I was trying to find more alternative ways to put storage into here. Now, as soon as I finish recording this video, and I don't remember if uh, I mentioned this in the video or not. It looks like I probably didn't. Um, I, I got some drive trays off eBay, and people will keep leaving comments and sending me messages about getting more drive bays, which is fine, but I, I think I'm mostly good. I have a couple more Xserves that I want to use for another project, but I need to get two more drive trays at least for those, so I am on the lookout, but, you know, it's not like a pressing desire anymore. So I gotta say, overall, um, I'm actually quite happy with how the OWC uh, SATA adapter there has worked out. It's it's pretty good. I mean, it just works. So, I mean, I can't really argue with it. Now, this is kind of funny. Every time someone sees me using Linux in one of my videos, someone asks me about this uh, message of the day screen that I use. And it's not a package I got anywhere. It's just a little script I made that just runs in my bash RC file. It's pretty simple, really. All it does is do an fdisk dash L and a free mem command. It, that, that's really it. Oh, there's an LM sensors bit in there, too. But, yeah, it's it's just those basic commands processed with awk to create a slightly more readable format and a uh, glance. So, yep, that's uh, the Xserve video. I'm just kind of skipping through these. Now I'm going to move on. The next most popular video was Era Linux on the 98 machine. Now this was a collaborative video I did with Draga1. So, <laughs> this is kind of a weird thing. For some reason, I, people think Draga1 and I sound similar. Now... Both of us don't really hear that because we hear our own voices all the time, so we hear the distinctions quite easily. But, you know, a video like this kind of proves we're not the same person. I get the feeling that there are some people who seriously think that we are the same person, but we're not. So if you <laughs> if you want to get some proof, you know, go to Draga's channel, watch some of the Windows 98 LAN party streams where we're both playing in that. So this video was uh, kind of a nightmare to make because it just didn't work out well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this was a massive nightmare and just took forever. And Oh man, so much wasted time. So this was unimaginably frustrating. After I got it installed, the mouse didn't work. So... I went to reboot the computer to see if the mouse would start working after that, and dead. So, I, I'm still not sure what happened here, because we were just trying to move along as quick as possible, and didn't really have time to troubleshoot little things like that. You'd, you'd be really surprised at how pressured you feel when you're recording a video, and you don't want to take the time to try and solve little problems like this. 
So it's probably just something about how it was improperly configured. So I don't know. We just moved on to try something else. Yeah, this was a really frustrating video. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now this video, I really don't quite understand why it's so popular. I'm wondering if it's the bright colored thumbnail and how recent it was to the new 98 machine video where it was probably getting recommended all the time. Ah, yay, VLC is going to stop getting audio from this. Well, no matter. Um, let's see. So after I did uh, this next part here where I uh, definitely spot welded the batteries. I think someone left a comment saying that uh, 8-Bit Guy did a video where he soldered to batteries. and I, I'm still not going to recommend that. Uh, the way I do this is I scour the surface and then I flex it and then I just I heat up, I tin the tip of the soldering iron and get the um, what I'm soldering to the battery tinned as well. And that, I just get it on there as absolutely quickly as possible so no heat is able to transfer into the chemical component of the battery because you're really going to have a bad day if you try and heat up a battery. Yeah, a lot of people seem to have fond memories of Windows CE and I'm, I'm really surprised. Uh, a lot of people are saying that they got devices working with this and they were able to put in compact flash storage and while that stuff's probably true it's just that was a lot easier to do in the day, especially when you could go to a store and find something on a shelf that says it's designed for Windows CE. Coming out, you know, coming at this like 10 years later, at whenever this was released, I'm not actually sure. It's a lot more difficult to find things that are fully compatible with it. I have a uh, scrapped video where I tried to use a uh, XLR PCMIA recorder on the 486 laptop, and I spent like probably two hours trying to get that thing working only to find out that it wouldn't physically fit into the uh slot for the pcmia adapter now by two hours spent working i mean recording um so you know the pcmcia is just kind of a pain overall it's it's really difficult to work with after the fact especially so all right on to the next video which is the slightly controversial one Yeah, being my uh, first video I did, I wasn't really prepared for <laughs> having uh, lots of stuff happening all at once, so I didn't really clean up, you know, around the video, <laughs> and it's, I was just trying to find a shot of that, but, yeah, let's see, we're, I think I, yeah, that, oh man, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> That was one of the first things I did was uh, start cleaning up after I was getting a little bit more serious here. Moving my monitors to uh, swing arms instead of the uh, the just laptop stands there made a big difference in how easily it's supposed to clean up. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's address some of the, the big deal things here. So, first off, people just weren't happy with uh, how I did soldering in this. And this was the first video that I did soldering in. So trying to figure out how to set up the camera to solder while not obstructing my own view of soldering was kind of difficult. But uh, this part. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it right here. I, I left a comment kind of talking about this, but uh, I had just got the Soderpult solder sucker. I'd used the cheap solder suckers before. And they really sucked. So I, I tried to do some research online to fi figure out what's a good solder sucker. Because it felt like an oxymoron to say a good solder sucker to me. So I just recently bought this one, um, which wasn't inexpensive, but it wasn't too terribly much. But it wasn't a $5 one. It's just an aluminum tube with a notch cut out of it like you'd usually see. So at this point, I was thinking I really wanted to use this thing to try it out. And uh, so I was just kind of using it everywhere without really thinking about whether or not it was applicable to that situation. And that resulted in the uh, pad being removed from this. Now, the real problem here wasn't that I used a solder sucker. It was actually my solder sucker technique. So if we go to the exact moment I do this, um, which is kind of hard to get in there. All right, here we go. 
So the mistake happens right here. So I've left the tip of the iron on the pad as I actuate the solder sucker. Now the solder sucker, it's, you know, equal and opposite reactions. It judders back and forth when you use it. And it had pushed the tip of the iron into the pad. That's what happened. So I've actually, since then, I can do this with the solder sucker nowadays, but it's a two-part motion where you pull the soldering iron out and then depress the plunger. So, you know, you learn from your mistakes. This was a learning process. Now, on to the uh, rest of this, people. Yeah, I wish I'd got to see the outcome of hacking up my own pad for this, because that was fun. I have done it on something else since this, but I can't remember what it was. I don't think it was something I made a video about. Now... Um, the chips stopped working after I uh, did this, and I, I'll never know if it was something wrong with the pad I put on or if the chips died somehow. Some people say ESD. Well, this is an ESD mat, so I don't really see how it could have been ESD damage. Uh, some people say that the heat gun is uh, a problem for these types of RAM chips, that they're sensitive to temperatures, so that could have been the problem, except Except that they probably were flowed on in the first place with a heat gun since they're SMD. Well, not a heat gun, but, you know, the, whatever. Uh, so it's, you know, it's it's hard to say. My heat gun isn't very well uh, temperature controlled. I don't have a hot air pencil yet still. So, you know, one of these days I'm going to have to actually pony up and grab one of those. But, yeah, I, I, I got to say, I'm... Just as unhappy with the outcome of this video as anyone who seems to watch it is. So, you know, just take some solace in knowing that I dislike this video as well. Fun little uh, back history note here. This line, this little triangle here, um, is actually a concept I had where I was going to mount a camera permanently above my desk. And this would help mark the top left corner for me so that I could know where I was positioning stuff relative to the frame. Now, I ended up not doing that and opting for a uh, dynamic camera instead, which I think was a smarter choice. Um, what I've seen for static camera content, it's it gets boring because nothing moves and you can't really see much. So, you know, that's a fun little history note there. So, yeah, after the whole shebang, I was able to find another RAM module online and... Uh, yeah, that worked out. I didn't know that this was EDO memory. I'd never tried to find memory for an old laptop like this before. A lot of people were just screaming about that in the comments, too. So, you know, what? what <laughs> you got to learn something for the first time at some point. So, you know, I, I didn't know. But, yep, that was the, uh, the RAM video. So, this video, I actually haven't watched this video since that I uh, released it, because I had to watch it so much while trying to proof view this, and I'm just going to go ahead and stop it so I don't have to listen to myself, because I could literally recite this video from memory still. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> This, this was a, a heck of a video. You know, I always wonder if bands from particularly the 80s would know a video, or not a video, if a band from the 80s would know that a song was going to be a one-hit wonder. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you got to assume that they must, especially their managers of the label would tell them, you know, this song, this is a big deal. Um, but when I was making this video, I knew it was going to be popular. I mean, the concept's just solid. So, you know, it was just a matter of execution. And for me, this was a totally different type of video to make. Because I normally do, like, a progressive video where we go through a project and see what happens. And this wasn't really that. This was, this was a presentation. This was rehearsed. This was performed. Which is not the type of video I typically make. And I, I'm not sure I ever really want to make videos like that. But I had to make this one. I had the idea... And I'd been working on getting the parts. It was just, it was going to happen. So, I'm very happy with how this video turned out overall. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't really know uh, what else to say about this one. This was, this was a good one. This one, 
I, I'm glad I was able to make this. I guess I, I regret not having a big box on Real Tournament 2004 there. Um, which, you know what, I can skip ahead to that. Because some people, you know, they don't, they're don't. they wondering why uh, this performs so poorly. The 1 gigahertz Pentium 3 I have in this is literally the minimum system requirements for this game. So it's the CPU is what's bottlenecking it. Now, someone else said there might be some patches to fix it on lower-end systems, and I didn't look into that, really. I was trying to record the gameplay footage as fast as possible. I spent weeks working on this, over months of time, um, doing the recording. So, uh, at this point, I was running out of time. And, you know, I'd just come off of recapping the Voodoo 5. I was just happy it was working. Wow, uh, that reminds me. Some people were a bit annoyed about the power supply, which, you know, I thought I pretty well covered in the uh, video here. So, about the power supply back here. Um, I ended up not using that in the long run. Now, some people were saying that, you know, the 5 volt rails on modern power supplies don't deliver as much current as an older power supply, and that's definitely true, but I thought I'd overbought a power supply enough for it, being a 400 watt, when your typical power supply from this time period would be like 250 to 350 watts. So I thought I was good, but this one yet still was not. So I ended up taking the power supply out of the old 98 machine um, and sticking it in the new 98 machine for the game stream I did, which... It happened very last minute. I actually thought the Voodoo 5 had gone bad again, that more capacitor juice had just kind of moved around and I hadn't fully cleaned it. So um, I have a rig that I designed that uh, will slosh fluid back and forth over this and uh, get it fully cleaned. And one day I'm probably going to release a video about that because it ended up being kind of cool. I'll throw a little preview in here. But, uh, yeah, maybe one day that'll happen. But, you know, so new power supply happened. I, yeah, that, well, an old power supply happened on a new one. That's the whole thing. So, yeah. Oh, another thing. A lot of people complained about the uh, five and a quarter drive, which, you know, yeah, no, most people didn't have that in 98. But I was playing games back from 84 that came out <laughs> on five and a quarter discs. So, you know, even Doom there, Doom, was available on five and a quarter discs. You could get the original Doom on five and a quarter. So all the way up to 93, you could have still seen five and a quarter. But, yeah, my whole point was that this is a computer for, you know, a large time span of games. So a five and a quarter drive, to me, was appropriate. And that's the one I was trying to find for this. Now on to videos that I think you should go back and check out if you're new to my channel or, you know, maybe you skipped a few. So this is a video about repairing the cracked thumbstick on a Kindle DX. Now this is a known problem with these things and it happens to a lot of them. So rather than try and buy one or find one online, you know, for on eBay or get a repro, I decided to 3D print one. Um, so I could just create new parts. Because I like making new parts for old things. And it, this is a better way to do it. It's more sustainable in the long run. So I designed a new model. And printed it out. And I was able to fit it on there. So yeah, I think that one's one you might want to go check out. Next up, along the same lines, is the uh, HP 86. I say it's a B in this, but it's actually an A. Um, this is a video about fixing the key stems in this. Now, the key stems have this problem where they uh, splay. So, it's, it's a big deal on these and the TI-99 4As. But I designed a new model to be 3D printed for this. Um, which I think I show somewhere, um, well, yeah, there's them 3D printing, but, uh, the design process is there, it is in the background. So, yeah, these are designed, uh, it's been refined a bit since then, but yeah, I think this one's worth checking out. This is a really cool old vintage computer, um, that's not very common, and, uh, yeah, this, this one turned out well. 
All right. Up next is the Brother EP20. This was a really cool little thing that I was able to grab. And, you know, this is um, it's a dot matrix typewriter, and it can use thermal paper, which makes it one of the most sustainable dot matrix, or, well, yeah, one of the most sustainable typewriters you can get a hold of. Now, this um, is actually just about the worst possible model you could get because it doesn't have a serial port on the side that you could use it as a printer with, but it's still pretty cool. Um, it's dead silent, and it's it's uh, it's pretty simple inside actually. But yeah, this is this is one that you should really go check out. It's it's pretty cool. All right. This video, I just, I kind of like this video. It's, it's one where I had a plan, I was going to work on something, I go through and I troubleshoot it, I find the fault, I come up with a fix, and, you know, it has a, it has a happy ending. So, it's, that one's good if you just want a good, solid video that's got an, a natural progression where you can follow along and it just feels good. And finally, the video I think you should check out the most is uh, my Sony Soapbox ICC-1600 calculator video. Now, I think this thing is amazing. Um, it, it, it's just so cool. It's kind of late to the party for being this large and chunky and using Nixies, but it's super cool. That made it get this really unique modern-ish design and uh yeah we go i go through and i kind of not you know refurb or repair just kind of fresh re re no what, what would be the term i just I go through and i take, take care of it it needed some love and uh yeah oh it's also got some absolutely amazing key switches that uh yeah if you liked the uh, casio video which kind of also got ignored you should check this one out Now, it's interesting going through this, um, and I actually need to come back and take care of this because I've noticed that this capacitor here is actually leaking just a tad. So I need to find a replacement for these uh, three caps we can see there. So I'm going to be coming back to this one. You know, or that could be glue because now I'm seeing some of the same brown looking stuff over there. So I'll have to open it up again and verify that it's not just glue. But yeah, this is that's one that's worth checking out too. Well, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed what I've been doing so far, and uh, you know I'm definitely not going anywhere. I'm going to be continuing to make videos. My next video is already done and waiting to be released, so and there'll be plenty more after that. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be making a few minor production changes to how my videos work for my second year i don't normally do research before the videos um <laughs> so i'm i'm trying to get better about that and i've started some pre-production policies that i'm going to be doing from now on to make it so i don't make quite as many mistakes while i'm going along so hopefully my videos are going to be getting better as i do this and uh yeah so I don't think I have much else to say, you know, so this has just been a little look behind the scenes and, uh, yeah, you know, I don't normally say this, but, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you, I hope you enjoy my content. I'll see you later.